and she would make an effort to preserve some of those stories and because it wasn't easy for anybody, particularly the women, trying to make a breakthrough. But times changed and they overcame that and now I believe we're at a point where they're an integral part of the unions, the work sites. <laughs> I was 19, I think I just turned 19. So I was the first female cement finisher in the city of Calgary. I started as a laborer on the shovel and then I moved up to pulling the street and doing the back edge and then steel trowel, deep cut, putting the cuts in the concrete. Then I went into the gutter, which is lifting the gutter to make, you know, those little curbs. It took my boss two weeks to convince the office to hire a girl because they didn't think that a woman would be able to do the job. Um, my first day, I was <laughs> so tired I could barely stand. And they said, take a day off. And I was like, obviously not, I'm gonna take a day off because that's gonna look really bad. So I just showed up the next day. We had to grind out this huge groove where they needed to back weld and all this stuff. We needed to get all the carbon out of it from gouging. So it was me and this other apprentice and I knew right away that I was gonna be doing most of the work. You know, even though he was, you know, six and a half feet tall, you know, he was big and broad and strong. He was on a five inch grinder and I was on a nine inch grinder. And I knew it, and I thought, you know what, don't complain. No, no, you're not gonna complain. You know, and everyone who sees this knows. So the next day, actually, right in the safety meeting, it was brought up. Are we gonna get the girl apprentice off that nine inch? And I just thought for a second, like, no, I'm okay. They never believe that like a 25 year old is, especially me, because I think that's just like, like I don't look like I could do things in the trades and then they see me hanging off the ropes like with a jackhammer taking off like cement that weighs probably more than I do and then I'm hanging there holding on to this trying to put it into a bag to like lower down. I get a lot of people saying like I'm so impressed with what you're doing and good job and keep up what you're doing and like they're like we need more people like you to do this because it's just they want to see it like they do want female in the trades. Um, what happened is I won the national competition in Toronto and made it to the international level, which takes place every year in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, and as I get there, I was told that I was a, an anomaly, I guess, and that I had been the first woman in its 50 year history to have ever made it to the international competition. That was a complete shock to me. And uh, so being a Canadian woman made me extremely proud and it was kind of a sign for me to show that other women in the industry are capable of this thing too and say, look, we have one woman here. There's a lot more that can do the same. So there's a photo of me in an asbestos gear. The suit is huge. Uh, during the training, I'd asked, will there be small sizes available? And they said, no, there's only one size. Day comes, got to put it on, and it's gigantic. I can't move my legs properly. I can't climb the scaffolding. Basically, one size fits no one. We are women. There are different needs for women. And just as a prime example, we need our own washrooms. We're not looking for hair salons on site. It's not, it's not like that. We're looking just simply for equity and equal opportunity. We want gloves that fit our hands. We want coveralls that aren't going to drag on the floor of the porta potty. Like it's simple little things like that. So for me, that's what Build Together is. Build Together is changing the stereotype um, to suit the industry saying like we, we can fit in. It's just these little things that need to change in order for to everyone to work together easily and fairly. Build Together is a uh, committee that is made up of all the different building trades affiliates. We just work towards 
building our union community, working towards a more respectful workplace, and also trying to encourage workers to choose the skilled trades. I want more sisters in the trades. I want to get more girls out there because the girls are crazy. They do such crazy work out there. And it's like, and it's not as scary as you think it is. Like, it's kind of a weird thing to get into. And it, you definitely, it is scary, but it's like that good scary where if it scares you in your stomach, like, you know, you have to do it because you're only going to get better. It's only going to be a wicked opportunity. You're going to grow. Me and my husband actually got married on 720, the same date as our local union, Iron Workers Local 720. I remember coming into the lunchroom and I could see like they were all stirring and I knew they were up to something, absolutely up to something. And uh, so then all the soup, like the super comes out and the GF and they're all just kind of looking around and the job steward, he brought me a card that they had drawn actually and they all signed it all and wished us all the best in our marriage. And um, they gave us an envelope with $800 cash in it. And that was six of our brothers um, wanted to send us on our way with a good well wish. And I remember starting to bawl instantly and go around and I'm giving everyone hugs. And I just remember feeling like this is, this is my family. That is my community and like, that's what I fight for with the labor movement. You know, that's why I want workers to be represented and to be unionized so that they can feel like when they go to work, they're just as valued as they are at home. I think it's important to have that solidarity um, for all kinds of like, like different ethnicities, different like L LGBTQ, all those kind of things. Like it's important to have that solidarity. We really work as a group and just make it happen. <laughs>